Welcome back to another episode of the Fantasia Podcast. We have a big episode here for you today because Fortnite Remix is here. Chapter 2 OG is here in a, in a form. It's different. It's sort of how we kind of predicted it last week. If you did watch last week's episode, not everyone here does watch last week's episode. But that is fine because we have an amazing panel of some of the best minds in Fortnite ready to break down all things Fortnite Remix. We'll start off uh, to my left. Who, Penel? How you doing, brother? I'm mean, good. I like how you said the greatest minds of Fortnite just on the episode that Harry isn't here, which is in <laughs> fact you asked it, obviously. Uh, I'm, I'm well, man. I'm very well. I'm, I'm hyped. I'm, uh, I was burnt out of chapter five of all that bullshit now. Now that we're back in OG, you know, we're, we're, we're primed up again. Still chapter five, though, no? Hmm. Not Wait, chapter six, so. don't, 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 feel like it, don't shit on my yeah, dreams. It might not feel like it. <laughs> All right, then. Thank you very much. Um, and and uh, a, a, a rare guest on the podcast, someone who we don't see much of very often. Resub, how you doing, mate? <laughs> I thought I would uh, grace you guys with my presence this week, of course. Uh, you know, didn't have COVID or wasn't actually working. Well, actually, I'm working at the same time, so I can't even use that as an excuse this week. But yeah, I'm here now. So I actually decided to turn up. So you better be thankful. Uh, that's that's all I'm gonna say. This boy, if I hear wow. any recent jokes, <laughs> yeah, I'm just fucking. Okay, I'm out of here. Nice still, mustache. Still dodging. Yeah, uh, of course. And friend of the show, someone who we actually haven't seen in quite a while, but <laughs> always happy to have here. Kinch and Alex, how you doing, Kinch? Yeah, I'm really good. Thanks. Yeah, excited to be back. Thanks for having me back on. Kinch, uh, for for the viewers who maybe are wondering, this isn't the typical setup we've seen you at before. What, what, what's what's going on with you, mate? Mm. Well, um, you know, I've been seeing a few players move around regions recently. Okay. Uh, we've seen some EU players going to NA. I decided to make a little switch from EU to Brazil. So, <laughs> yeah, I'm over in Brazil. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be, uh, you know, playing Remix FNCS on Brazil. Yeah, because oh, that's wow. definitely happening. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Looks like someone's trying to get the, the Kinch, Kinch premium subscriptions up in brazil so he's just giving them a lot more focus mm. this season you know trying to trying to dominate the, yeah, the Fortnite yeah, world yeah, yeah. um well look things are interesting of course we had a big event leading into the new season which in itself drew some controversy i was actually there in new york for this big event um i i don't know how much i can say about it because <sighs> in typical epic fashion uh, I'm usually not allowed to say just, a lot of things. Just tell me how Ice Spice smelled. <laughs> I don't know, but if you really uh, want to know, I'm oh, sure there's places uh, you can you can uh, find out that information. Um, I I was I flew out to New York a couple of days before the event, um, and essentially, if Snoop Dogg and Ice Spice weren't there, I was gonna have to rock up on stage and Ooh. kick off Fortnite Remix. So it would have been, you know, uh, would have been, would have been uh, better, maybe. Yeah. Uh, ideally, you know? Maybe, maybe it would have been better, depending on who you ask. Um, but, you know, that, that was just a backup. In the end, I didn't have to do anything really, which was great. So I got to just enjoy the event like everybody else. And the event sort of drew a lot of, uh, uh, of opinion. I know as a competitive Fortnite podcast, we typically just don't pay attention to this kind of stuff, but there was a lot of discourse around this. This has became a big controversial thing. Mm -hmm. Fortnite sort of went all out in, in many ways, right? Event was held in Times Square. They had control over the majority of the screens in Times Square. They had Snoop Dogg and Ice Spice, which regards what you think of those two as artists, they are two massive artists. Um involved in performing live here you can see this you can probably spot me somewhere in the crowd there so excited as you can tell um wh what did you guys make of the event and and do you guys feel like the event was a miss because a lot of people seem to to have that opinion coming from like the very casual community i mean if <sighs> Let's be honest, how many FNCS prize pools did this event cost? That's that's what I all put my metrics in, right? <laughs> There's so much. I looked it up, like, each one of these billboards costs, like, two hundred to $250,000 for, like, every hour to, to, to rent or something crazy like that. So, you know, there's a few a few million in there, as we see Ice Spice rocking up, my favorite part of this event. Um, 
like it wasn't a bit mediocre sure like it, it's not very akin to like the classic fortnite storyline stuff it's it felt more like a super bowl commercial than a actual like fortnite event but I, I think we also have to realize fortnite is just a massive marketing gimmick these days this pretty much confirms it it's cool that they did this whole thing irl in, in new york what other game is doing it it's whatever. To the one guy on Twitter, I saw there was a guy on Twitter who was crying about the storyline. Like, how the hell are they going to fit Ice Spice and Snoop Dogg in the Fortnite storyline? Shut up. <laughs> no one cares that much. Play the video game, bruv. There you go. That's like that meme where the guy's yeah, like, man fights war 29 years after it's over. <laughs> just, yeah. just give up, bro. You know, yeah. you're saying they're taking away prize pool from FNCS, but what if I told you they're taking it away from Chapter 6? Reload ice ball. Mm. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Then you'd be happy. <laughs> I'd, I'd put all my money yeah. in ice ball. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think uh, it was weird because yeah, me and Boot watched it and it was. It was like it see you can see on screen right now, right? If you're if you're watching, there's a lot of cool visuals. Like obviously they kind of half recreated New York inside of uh, the map as well, which was which was cool, right? But but it was strange because you essentially were just you go in. And then you're watching a screen of something that was like 720p uh, if you want to like full screen it. And if he full screened it, I was like, okay, this is like a, this is like a, is this a good concert by itself? I don't know because I wasn't there. It's like, would I just watch this video by itself? I was like, probably not. And then the relation to Fortnite, I mean, I, obviously the one casual that Boot was talking about, you know, it's kind of weird because I'm like, yeah, there is no real connection between like this event and Fortnite at all. You know, like, having it in-game is cool as a concert, but it's not really in-game in the way that, like, the Travis Scott concert was in, where it actually yeah. utilized, like, some of the features of the game. It was literally just, like, we remake New York, which looks sick, and then we just play the video on screen, uh, and th and that's really it. was it also there. in so, YouTube, the stream. Like, you could watch yeah. it not in-game, like, unlike yeah, the other things. It, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. That makes sense, yeah. So it was kind of weird. It was, like, it was a bit underwhelming from that perspective, where I was, like, you know, a lot of the cool things about live events is that they use Fortnite's like uh what's the right word for it all the tools and stuff that they have and of course like they did to to recreate for uh actually new york but i don't know it just felt a bit underwhelming from that perspective as well yeah i i saw a lot of this criticism and and to be fair a lot of it i think is fair and comes from a good place because people just you know want the best for the game and they want to be entertained as best as possible i think for me like i I definitely had like a certain level of appreciation for like things that I guess weren't like very public, right? So like mm -hmm. the coming together of this whole thing is like was super impressive to me. The fact the, the way they had to like keep things a secret beforehand, like they you know like and and it just sort of all happened thirty minutes before again, where like things that were were pretty cool for me as someone who was actually there in the crowd, right? It's rare that I feel like we can ever give that sort of insight here. Mm -hmm. As someone that was in the crowd, it, it was like a cool thing, you know, because we, you know, everyone sort of sat there with the timer on the screen and everyone's sort of like, what's happening? What's going on? You could feel the excitement there. People like, you know, I had like a bunch of people who you clearly know aren't anything to do with Fortnite at all. They're just people in New York Times Square because it's such like a hot spot. And <laughs> I had a couple of guys who were like, Come on, dog. Tell me who's performing tonight. And I was like, I can't say anything, mate. Like, I couldn't tell you even if I knew. Like, I just uh, can't say nothing. He's like, Come on, dog. I know you could tell me some shit. And I was like, No, <laughs> I, can't, I, can't, I can't tell you anything, bro. Like, I swear, bro. I can't say anything. I don't know. Um, and and like it, it was it was cool. Again, in terms of like a concert experience, was it like the best concert I've been to? Definitely not. Right. Like it, it wasn't that. But it was it was a cool spectacle. But I do think it's fair because I, I saw one person in particular who was like, yeah, this is just like a glorified party royale, you know, like, you know, mm. it was just something playing on screen. We watch whatever. Um, and so I, I definitely get that criticism. I, I understand people wanting something that feels like more storyline based and whatnot. But again, it's just like, I, I think, I think things like this are cool. And if, if you want more storyline based things, because that's like your, that's what gets you excited about Fortnite, fair enough. Um, but I also think you can appreciate something like this being put together mm. yeah. uh, without having to to beat it down and be like, well, oh, this is crap because yeah. it's not storyline related and it don't make sense I mean, that Snoop want, Dogg's in the game, yeah. you know? They, they want to bring in like loads of new people, obviously. It's not just to cater for the current player base who might want the storyline because all like, you know, the people around the world that see this thing going on in New York and don't play Fortnite yet. They don't want a storyline. <laughs> right. Or like they don't they, they, yeah, they can't just appreciate it. Right. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like they're, from just, a... they're just gonna get interested in Fortnite just because of this 
we know one off event. And it, that's, it, that's going to be good for the game in the long term. Exactly. And it's like, we, we started off this whole thing by going like, this is clearly, this is all a marketing thing. From a marketing perspective, they, mm. they did as good as you really can. The yeah. amount of comments I saw on social media of people who were just going, damn, Fortnite took over all the screens in Times Square. Mm. That's crazy. Mm. Like that, that alone was like exactly. the majority yeah. of what exactly. I was seeing, right? It's like, had they had done something super storyline based, like would those same people have like clocked in? It depends on what they would have done. But again, it's like, it's unlikely, you know? It's, it kind of gives me like OG Fortnite vibes of like when World Cup was a thing too, right? Like if it makes it feel Fortnite's very mainstream again, because like right. Fortnite hasn't felt mm -hmm. very mainstream in the past two or three years, but now you do this massive IRL event <laughs> with two massive celebrities and Ice Spice, uh, then you have, you know, uh, this whole thing where a lot of people now are going to report on it. It's basically free marketing, not only from themselves because they paid it inside of New York, but now, you know, news websites uh articles social media places all those people are probably going to report on it like yo snoop dogg and ice spice we're in new york doing some fortnite shit so that's like widespread to even more corners of the earth so um loki kind of genius because like you don't have to pay other people to promote it for you they're just going to report on the news that they see in new york I don't think it's very free though, mate. <laughs> well, I mean, the, the, other than the initial investment in New York, the rest of it, like, here's, like, say by say, is, is free year. But that, yeah, that, it was very expensive probably. investment was, was something. I mean, yeah, to get, to get Levin to New York on a first class flight? Oh my God. How much was that? Yeah, it's crazy, man. Crazy. No. Um, the event itself, though, outside of that, um, looking beyond what it led us to, we obviously at the end of it they played the trailer. It was a shame because they didn't actually play the trailer in Times Square with um, uh, like the oh. full video. They only played it for the people at home. Yeah. No. Um, oh. But obviously <laughs> the, the trailer plays. <laughs> you actually do only get fifteen minutes in Times yeah. Square to perform. It's like oh a, wow, okay. Yeah, no matter what, everybody gets fifteen wow. minutes. So, um, essentially, they play this trailer and. It's showcasing Snoop Dogg in game with Ice Spice. It showcases Eminem as being a part of this season's lore and this season's narrative. And then at the very end, they flash and you see Juice World there uh, briefly. And obviously a bunch of people I'm sure freaked out about that. I really wish they showed that in New York because I think people would have freaked out if they had seen the, the Juice World thing. But either way, um, I'm not sure what the reaction was like at home because I, I, I didn't see it. But the thing that was really interesting, right, for me, Boop, because, you know, we, we talked about this last week, was last week we speculated about what is the new season going to be? What, mm. what are we going to have this season? What is Fortnite Remix going to be all about? And I'm not trying to toot anybody's horn, but one person on the podcast was spot on about exactly what it was going to be. Uh, and essentially Fortnite Remix was a bringing back chapter two, right? It was an OG season. Um, but they included some remix POIs, remixes <laughs> of some of the, you know, classic spots and, you know, points of interest that everybody loves using the musical artist, right? So the agency is now the Dog Pound and it's Snoop Dogg's POI. And, you know, we're mm. going to see more and more come throughout this OG season. What do you guys make of the new map, the new season Fortnite remix actually jumping in in game yourselves? I'm sure mm. you guys have been playing a bunch. I actually haven't gotten a chance to play. Yeah, I know. I know oh my I know. God, this Fraudulent. guy. I know, I've Fraud. not had the chance to play it. But what have you guys made of it so far? Just exactly the same. Just exactly <laughs> the same. as like, you know, obviously there's the themed POIs in terms of, you know, the design of them, but they're actually just the exact same as they were from chapter two anyway. Like, you know, still just the agency or the authority. I can't remember which version of it mm. it was uh, when it released at that time. So it's like, it is a classic throwback. It just looks slightly different, which is, I think is good because then it does the people who say want to, you know, when the shark comes back, whenever it does in the future or something like that, you know, people aren't going to be upset that it's a completely different spot. It's still the exact same thing. It just looks slightly different at that time. So it's cool. And no, I mean, the whole season just feels like you're playing chapter two. It's just, it's literally just like you've loaded up a chapter two sim. You've still got some sprinting on and, and that's pretty much it. It's it's a month of like a bit of a throwback right like if it was like a three month season again it would be like oh man this is gonna get old real quick but like it's a fun month change i don't i see a lot of people complaining about various things about this season you know competitive related casual related <laughs> like at the end of the day it's one month of fun take it as like the extra bit of fun while we wait for chapter six even with the event wise right <laughs> they don't even need to have made a massive event for chapter two remix they could have just done it like 
some black hole event and then moved into it. But they decided to do an event for it for just a month long season anyway. So um, if, if you expect more, like also storyline related, I'm sure that'll come in chapter six. I'm sure there'll be things that'll make people happy uh, on the other side for chapter six as well. So um, it's been fun. It's good. Nothing to complain about in my opinion. Yeah, I mean, last last year's OG was like what really kickstarted a massive rise in uh, the player base again, right? Mm -hmm. We saw a big rise into OG season, which kind of carried on through to Chapter 5 itself. Um, and all throughout this year, actually, I think we had probably more comp players than the previous year. Um, so yeah, I guess that's the idea with running the whole event thing for this sort of tiny short season, which seems a little bit irrelevant because Chapter 6 is the bigger thing. But actually, this is the thing that's going to kickstart you know, the next boost in Fortnite. Uh, so yeah. I think that's that's done really well. Um, and yeah, for me, like, you can give me like these <laughs> these different changes on the map, like Dog Pound or whatever, new slightly adapted POIs. But what I'm most interested in is just going back to the exact same spots that I landed in, in whatever it was, 2020, 20, I forgot what year it is. 20, yeah, 2020. 20, 20, yeah. It came yeah, out, yeah. Chapter 2 came out 2019, end of 2019 mm. into 2020. So, yeah. so so I haven't I haven't even been to the Dog Pound yet. I've, I've just <laughs> been off to, uh, off to Misty and um, Sweaty. Mm. He's, scared, yeah, he's, gonna say he's scared of all the Brazilian uh, Dog Pound <laughs> players. <That's it. laughs> definitely, definitely. I mean, it, it's funny because... Um, you bring up some great points there. One, the, the first person I watched this season was Martos because, you know, prime Martos, mate. It's chapter two, mm -hmm. we're talking about it. And he instantly landed Misty and he was like, I got to go to the to the OG Martos spot, you know, I got to go where I used to always go. And I think a lot of people did that with last year's OG, right? Like there was a lot of people who were like, I'm like, oh, cool, Tilted's back, but I want to mm -hmm. land at the spot. I know mm -hmm. that's my home. Um, and, and even on the first thing you said there, Kinch, last year, right? After everything played out how it did, I think many people realized OG clearly just felt like something intentional to bring a lot of players back to play chapter five. Like they wanted to just bring everybody in so that they'd stick around and play the new chapter. I can't mm. remember what collabs we had at the start of this chapter, but I'm sure there was like a thought process of we've got certain collabs we gotta, you know, make sure we Oh no, it was wasn't it all like the Lego stuff? Am I bugging? Was that before that? Uh, was it all like the yeah, Lego, Lego the UEFS? That was, that was at the or start of chapter, chapter five, yeah. All yeah, so stuff, like all the yeah. leg, yeah, so like all the Lego December, stuff and December. all of that, right? Yeah. They were bringing out all of that stuff and it was like, we need a bunch of people on the game to play all of that stuff because I'm mm. sure there was so much money that went into Lego Fortnite, Rocket Race and all of that stuff. And so OG was like the vehicle to, to bring all those people in. I'm sure this season Remix is being treated the same, right? Like I'm sure there's going to be some big thing that's coming out in chapter six or some big collabs that they need to make sure they have a lot of players for to fulfill certain, you know, agreements and whatnot. Disney, like, right? Isn't the it Disney, Disney stuff, right? Yeah. All the Disney mm. collabs and whatnot. I'm sure there's something there that they're like... Yeah, the resub skin. The, the resub icon skin. You gotta pay for that. Uh, you know. <laughs> yeah, I can't wait I'm for the resub it. icon skin, man. I'm definitely <laughs> buying it and mm. using code resub as well. Um, of course. And so this, I'm sure, is just the same thing. It's like they're just trying to bring as many players to the game so that when Chapter 6 comes out, there's residual amount of players and, and cause has brought up like the tweet here from Hypex Fortnite peaked out 4.6 million uh, players uh, on one of the first days on November 3rd so that's two days ago from when we're recording this again it's less than OG like as you can see in the comparison OG day one had 5.8 million OG day two had 6.2 million whereas remix day one had 4.3 and remix day two 4.6 again a lot less, I guess, you know, than mm. a couple million less, which is quite a lot. But 4.6 million people on the game is like amazing, right? And and residually that's gonna drop off a bit. But by the time chapter six comes around, you, you can expect to see two, three million people on the game, which I think is a great thing. Mm. And also you've got to think like, obviously it's gonna be less than chapter one OG. Firstly, there's the more people who played, well, I imagine there's more people to bring back from chapter one like there's more hype of chapter one than there would be for chapter two anyway for sure. because yeah. the amount of people that quit there for chapter two it's also like I, f I feel like myself included a lot of people got bored of chapter two because it was so repetitive for you know two years on on top so it's almost like 
you lose i mean i personally feel like i've lost a bit of nostalgia for chapter two just because of that alone it's like i just played enough of this man you know yeah. i've seen this i've seen this all before uh and i'm sure i'm not the only one that thinks that plus it's the second time you do a nostalgia trap uh so you know it's not gonna work as well for some other people so the numbers aren't gonna be there but those numbers are still really really good regardless so it's like uh i think those are kind of bang on what i would have predicted uh, if, if you'd asked me you showed me the player numbers mm -hmm. from og1 and then be like where do you think it would have been it's like Nowhere near as high, but still really good. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's exciting. It's an exciting time, I think, to to be involved in Fortnite because as much as like OG or Remix now is the way it is, and it's going to be this for the next month. Like, I'm already starting to think about all the things that we potentially have in store in Chapter Six. When it comes to OG, though, we have a bunch of tournaments that have been announced. We have, uh, you know, a bunch of you know, things in the loop pool that are slightly different, right, to, to when we originally had them. Um, and, and some things more f look, look more fun than others, I should say. But specifically on tournaments, the schedule is jam-packed. Mm -hmm. We have got a mm -hmm. lot of tournaments. Officially, we have said goodbye to duos, it has seemed, right? You know, duos is no more. They've completely binned it off. Apart some people are sure. Apart from Evo, Evo, I guess, Evo. yeah. Either right? them. Technically, Technically, the evals are still duos, but in terms of like official tournaments that everybody has access to playing, um, they've binned off duos. I guess some people will be happy about that. I'm kind of happy about that because yeah, the, the duo tournaments kind of got really awkward for me now because like I was playing <laughs> with I was, I'm trioing with like Harry and Minnie, mm. and like Minnie and I were like stinking it up. So then I was like, oh, I might as well just play with Harry. And then I was like, oh, but this is not awkward now because we just left them. There. So I'm just happy they're gone. Who now. did you do better with? Who was Harry, like Harry? Harry, ooh, Harry, yeah. okay. Well, me and Minnie okay. really stunk it up. Like, we were just playing <laughs> bad. Like, it wasn't even okay, like, okay. yeah, we were just both playing bad. Um, <laughs> so now we have two trio cash cups a week. So one of the trio cash cups were placed in the, uh, um, the duo cash cup from before. And then we have solos moved to Friday instead of Mondays, which is terrible news for Reese Hub. Yeah. I'm sure you are. I've, I've already so informed upset. the missus that... She's getting booted back a few hours so I can play the cash cup. <laughs> oh, wow. so, so I think we're quite lucky here. So if anyone does not know the lore, Friday night, I've been with my girlfriend for seven and a half years. Friday night is date night and it always has been. <laughs> I know. I, that's, that's the only reason I'm here, of course. Mm -hmm. And I was like, babe, tough news, tough times. <laughs> uh, you know, remember that really important tournament that you know nothing about that's on a Monday? Yeah. You know, I have to play it every week. You know, it's really critical mm. for my content. They've moved it. They've moved it to Friday, our date night. <laughs> no. She was devastated. I mean, to be honest, though, thankfully, they moved it an hour earlier. So rather than six till eight, it's five till seven. Mm. So... I'm like, we can, we can just go out after that. It's fine. I'm just never going to play finals. That's what you're saying. Call my just good the other day. Yes. Well, I also like, just this, like this earlier tournaments. This change is so good, but you didn't say why. Uh, could, uh, you, yeah, yes. <laughs> could I what? Could, could you imagine being Reese's girlfriend? He like In the morning, he's like, babe, I have some news. He just texts her while she's at work. I got to tell you something when we're home. The whole day, she's like, oh, man, she's going to break up with me. Oh, no. He comes home, babe. <laughs> We have to delay our date night. I have solo cash cup to play, babe. It's like, oh, this piece of shit. But she probably thought it was like, oh man, this is big news. Uh, yeah, no. I mean, it's nice if you two expect that you're not going to qualify finals, you know? So you can have enough well, room for your date it's night. It's like, I have no excuse to, if I qual now, I'm like, I didn't want to play anyway. I'm going to go out, you know? <laughs> I didn't try, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, so yeah, I shall so be playing wait, every Friday. Well, what do you do if you do call then? You're just going to like... I just don't play. I, I mean, a lot of times when I called, I just didn't play anyway. Because... Hey, oh, but I have bad news. A lot of the times... Because <laughs> a lot of the times I was playing like the Middle East before and like four hours of tournaments is, is enough for me. I've also worked throughout most of the day before that anyway. Yeah. So when it comes to like finishing EU, it was like eight o'clock normally. I was like, I'm just off. I can't be bothered to come back an hour later and and not win a game. <laughs> so, yeah, I was like, so sometimes like I would just come back and I'd maybe like late queue a, a game or two, but I never really tried in finals, to be honest. Well, I very minimally I tried in, in that. Don't think it would have mattered if I did or not. So it's just that Classic now I, I, so, so giving it up isn't much of a isn't much of a heartache for me. You don't you don't want your one percent chance of getting a hundred dollars. <laughs> Seventy dollars at the taxes. Yeah, it's true. It's true. Two hours of gameplay is worth that chance. <laughs> yeah, just keep, keep rolling Ooh, the dice, mate. Yeah, You'll get there. I'll, I'll tell Bella that. She'll see what well, she thinks. Well, you do bring up a great point that they've moved the times of these tournaments. Like the tournaments, for the most part, are now a lot earlier. Now the Saturday Trio Cash Cup is like 
way way earlier in the day um uh, which is funny because i don't know if we said this on the pod or maybe we said it off the pod but i remember when they did that one uh trio cash cup early in the day on like the sunday last season we mm. were all sort of like yeah they, they're probably gonna keep doing this because this was a mm-hmm. nice time slot like, so to be doing the it, was, it was a really good time slot and it's good to see that yeah the lovely people in the comp team are like more of this please this was good um i like those early tournaments because it's like you just get out of the way you know you have yours like, the day afterwards too like you right. don't qualify right like he's like oh three p- it's such a, i think it's such a 2 p.m my time which is like 1 p.m uk times so like if you don't qualify you're done at like five you can have you can see your family again you can have dinner at the <laughs> dinner table you know you can't ignore them anymore yeah, on so. weekend. it's lovely yeah on the weekend yeah yeah that's great um <laughs> it's midday for us it's yeah, like 12. i don't know because our um, clocks moved back so i don't know if we're like more out of sync than the normal but yeah midday till three for you is so good Does that mean we can play na what time's na at why is that at 1 a.m 9 p.m. I'm not, I'm not playing that. I'm <laughs> no, not playing 9 p.m. till yeah. midnight. Okay, take it back. No, but cool. Either way, though, good things all around across the board when it comes to tournaments. Of course, though, there are reload tournaments as well, still. Uh, mm-hmm. not, not, not as much excitement for that one. But <laughs> the, we saw some changes to reload this season. Again, I've just not been as locked. I didn't even, <laughs> didn't even fucking realize, bro. They added solo reload uh, and a new reload map. I have seen a new reload map. Um, and it looks cool, but solo. Re- have anyone jumped into solo reload? Are you solo reload enjoyers? Bo- oh, Bo- was bragging about it. Oh, I, was, it. I wasn't bragging about it. I was just casually mentioning the fact they dropped three twenty bombs in a row with solo <laughs> reload ranked yesterday. My first time playing it, you know, just something light. Um, yeah, it's been really fun. It's been nice to not have to queue up into like solo duos because like you don't got the homies playing every morning. You know, you're like the only boomer that's playing video games in the afternoon. Other people are making YouTube videos and shit. You know. So like you want to hop in some game, but you don't really want to sit there looting for thirty minutes just to die to TTV four twenty sniper. So uh, <laughs> I hop into reload. You know, I, I land in, I kill some kids. They're all shaking, terrified that the big boobs coming for them in reload. <laughs> and then you know, I got like 23, 20 kills in a re- in a row or something. Like it was fun. It was really good. Um, the new map does feel. I f- the new map feels strangely uh, nostalgic as well because it's based off of the. Mm other chapter two POIs and it's really really nice like I'm, I'm getting the vibe i don't know what it is it's something maybe about the colors of it because it's like nice deserty orange or something but yeah. i think that map feels so much nice i, I feel nicer to play than the than the battle royale map in my opinion it is more nostalgic than the chapter two map and it's yeah. new i was i was Which, gonna say that like yeah. how does mm. the map actually feel because it looked when i saw the map it looked mad nostalgic yeah, I mean, I played one game of it only because I, I, I'm not gonna lie, I forgot that the new map was in, and it didn't work for most of the first day as well. Yeah. And it was really cool. I really liked it. I don't know why Fortnite has moved away from that art style. Generally, it looks so nice. It's so Fortnite esque. It just feels like you're playing Fortnite when you're playing on on this map right here. And like I said, most of this is completely new, but it just feels like a Fortnite map. Whereas like playing, especially like you know, the Chapter Five map and the art style, there was you know there was something that they were trying to get too modern and too cool with it. I think with our style. Let's go back to this. Let's take BR back to this. It's sick. It's so funny because I uh I remember I was backstage at the the Snoop Dogg Rice Spice event, right? Oof. And flex. uh that's a flex. I, 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 I was twenty bombs. But... I was with um Evan, right? Who who mm. most people in the Fortnite community will know who is, you know, Mr. Fix everything together, you know. He does a lot for Epic. And he was like showing me on his laptop like what the event looked like and he had his Fortnite in max settings mm. and i remember looking and i was like Are you playing any black ops 6 or something what the fuck is this? <laughs> like, this, looks, this looks crazy bro like what is this because i just haven't put Fortnite on max settings like ever mm. you know and like the game you know, looks comp and we put the lowest settings possible well, yeah. the shittiest, <laughs> crappiest set- i've got a three thousand pound pc here and i use the shittiest settings yeah. possible you know and the game looks incredible um but i still look at the old stuff and i'm like give us more of that like that looks i, I prefer the, mm. but maybe this is just like nostalgia yeah. hype you know no no here's the thing though right as someone last og and now this og if you go into replay mode on max settings on the on like this shit it is gorgeous it's mm. like nostalgic but like freshened up a bit obviously with the, with the newer kind of graphics it's just the art style there's something right about that art style that yeah. just looks so good yeah 
the the thing is though what the i think they're doing it not yet but they're gonna do uh like a swatch a switch up between this map and then the old map in reload every 30 minutes and i'm kind of not looking forward to that because i don't want to play the old map i don't i, I don't care for it anymore <laughs> so but like every 30 okay, minutes you swap back and forth between maps which is gonna be very shitty for someone that only wants to play the other map i hope they change it maybe they will based off like popular demand or something but yeah that wasn't good but in the eval cup Somehow they both mixed mm. together and like, and there was like on that top was, of each other. Yeah, that it was, was very crazy. interesting. And that was funny. There was a tweet made by a pro player, and they're like, "What the hell? What's wrong with the map? Back out! Back out! Back out!" I and the that. amount of hate this man oh got, God, he got from so casuals. much abuse. Like you piece, of, you have a once in a lifetime bug. <laughs> I would have been there, so happy to explore the map. <laughs> Is it put to turn him No. Or do I, you have anything better in your life than just to play for a bit of money? Like it was so crazy I'm, how so angry I'm, they were. I'm not gonna lie, right? Usually when I see like the casuals like full hating on someone in the comp community, I'm like, come on guys, it's ridiculous. But that was the one case where I was <laughs> probably, I was one of the commenters, mate. I'm like, fucking, <laughs> let's see, mate, let's back it out. Like, just get back in. Um it's funny though, because I understand that guy backing out because like you're in the middle of a tournament, you know, you got yeah. um, you know what I'm saying? Um, it did keep happening over the next couple of games. So it's like, yeah. yeah, so it's mm. like he, he, he did get the chance to explore. But my natural instinct when I saw it, I was like, mate, jump out right now and just run about the map. This looks like sick, bro. Come on. Um, but yeah, he, he didn't do that, which which was funny because, yeah, the, the casuals were not happy. Like, I was seeing different levels of abuse to normal. I feel like they're just more <laughs> wrapped up right now. Um, I should make a short reason. on that. I wonder if the replay mode's like that, actually, now I remembered. Maybe, yeah, maybe be, yeah. you should. That would have been a good short. Well, what happened to you, man? You used to be on it with the, with the content. But I'm on right? it. Uh, the COVID fucking, <laughs> man, it, was, fucking, it got me. Got me messed, down. Messed up and then brain. I was doing other stuff, so yeah. F it We're affects on the it. elderly sometimes more, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, there's some things that people aren't too happy about uh, this season. As much as we try to stay, po uh, you know, as much as we try to stay positive, uh, to stay in Epic's good books so that they eventually send us to global championships. Um, there are a couple things that people don't like. First things first, no siphon. Mm. No siphon in, 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 in our chapter two uh, mm. remix. Cars in tournaments, helicopter bugs. I saw a clip of Mongrel dying to, to the <laughs> helicopter. That mm -hmm. was utterly was hilarious. So he just had no clue what was going on. Um, but it was, you know, really, really funny. Are there, what, what are the sort of things we're not liking about the season? What are your thoughts on them not actually being Siphon, you know, after uh, the Siphon trials and whatnot? The, the helicopter thing is funny because I was watching the EVO. So this happened in EVAL Cup. And I was like, uh, I wrote in like the private epic disc. I was like, yo, guys, uh, there's cars in the tournament, by the way, and the helicopters. And then one of the guys is like, helicopters? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, uh, uh, yes. I'm like, oh, what the fuck? It's like they were very surprised there was a helicopter in the tournament and they tried to remove it. And then finally they removed it in the finals. But it was so funny to see that reaction like, oh, shit, we forgot to remove something from the game. That's really funny. I think it's that just, good. I think it's just hilarious that this bug is in the game in tournaments. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't care that they that, that it, like I'm not angry at them for leaving it in because I think it's just so funny because like these tournaments they don't really matter let's be honest no. No, <laughs> especially no. the eval on Sunday they they really don't matter so I thought it was just hilarious that they got to play with mm. all the cars and helicopters obviously the players are going to be kind of annoyed but I don't know but it's always just good content for yeah. spectators you know, very good content um, the helicopter was funny yeah, in particular just, because yeah. oh, sorry, sorry, go for Kench to interrupt. Yeah, on, on the, carry on on the helicopters before oh, you yeah. siphon. I was gonna say because uh, I someone told me like an hour before that it was in, and I was like, nobody leak, no one leak that there's a helicopter in. <laughs> like, I'm I, we jumped in and I was like testing to see how long you could fly in it in the sky. So if, I was like, this is the best solo cast up strat ever. No one's gonna know about it by Friday. And then the first tournament happens, I just see the clip of Malibu already using it. I was like, no. Oh, bro, they ruined it for me. <laughs> you about to go crazy with the helicopter? Yeah, I know. Bro, bro would have played finals. <laughs> had he had the I, I would have better hold up, hold <laughs> up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah fair enough. Uh, Siphon. Though. I'm gonna the explain that one. They know spin <laughs> delayed even more. She, she, she's not with helicopters. Yeah, she's not with helicopters. Just got the sense. I'm yeah. gonna pay Siphon. for the next yeah. dinner with with this earnings I'm about to get. <laughs> in the, so the um, well, those things aren't supposed to be in the game. Uh, mm. Siphon's not in the game, and we're assuming it's intended to not be in the game as well, even after the Siphon yeah. trials. What do we make of no Siphon so far? 
Well, we, we knew. <laughs> Go ahead. Oh, yeah, I was going to say, right, they, they ran the trials, right? And that was, then they need time to, like, decide what to do. So in my mind, it was always like, this is a decision for chapter six. So yeah. in that sense, this season is, like, not related to those trials and the future of Fortnite. So then they have the choice. Do they have Siphon, which is what we had in chapter two? But I see the problem with that is that if you give them everyone siphon for a month, imagine the uproar when they might take it away for chapter six, mm. if that's the decision for chapter six. Yeah. That's even worse than just not having it now mm. and then well, not having it. They, they like, we wouldn't. don't know what they're going to do in chapter six. But they they, they would. wouldn't dare, would they? <laughs> they Surely. Would. There's no way <laughs> they like, do like, you know, we're going to do the siphon trials. We're going to test it out. We're going to make the people happy. You know what we decided? Siphon isn't good. We're just going <laughs> to take it out. Like, could you imagine the absolute outrage if they did that? No chance. No chance. They're like, oh, we just give you 25 white siphon now. <laughs> they're like, no, bro. I think, to be honest, I think that I'm not as fussed about siphon because there's been good comms about it. They did actually say, you know, we're deciding this for the later. The biggest problem mm. I've had with the the loophole is the fact that it's not the competitive loophole again. That they've switched out. This is again they've switched the decision of like, is it going to be the ranked, the comp loophole, or is it going to be the pub loophole? So now ranked is back to like rocket oh, launchers, ranked, yeah. grenades, all the spam mm. cars, and all. And it's like the first day and on both our last couple of days, like especially if you play team modes, like someone's already carrying a rocket launcher and just getting spammed by RPGs by getting C4s and all this kind of thing. This is kind of annoyed. Obviously, again, it's a month. It's not like the full season. It's not like a full decision or not like a full chapter decision. So I understand, but it's just like kind of frustrating trying to play ranked and just getting like RPG and C4 and things like that. Third part of those nature. So you're telling me I shouldn't play today? Solos isn't bad. That's why, that's why I said earlier, so I said playing solo, I can't believe this, but solo ranked isn't as bad because people don't, like, they don't carry that stuff as much. And if they do, if you're carrying an RPG, they're just carrying, like, minis, so they've got, like, no heals or anything as well. So, like, you just hit them with a fat pump, and it's an easy kill, but... Um, a lot of those yeah. lying around, there. anyway. So, well, yeah, they changed that. Okay, here's the thing. The thing I've actually... Actually, wait, are you going to go... Uh, did you, you, You're you talking about things we don't like. You said things we don't like. Okay, yeah, so okay. I, I, I'll, I won't get ahead of myself. I won't get ahead of myself. You that can is, talk about I think something you like. If, you, if there's something you clearly let's like. Tra let's transfer, okay. I actually don't know if I like this yet. I've not decided yet. But <laughs> there's a stark difference between the pump shotgun and the hammer pump shotgun. And it's really interesting because I made a tweet when, the, when I saw that the gold pump does a max 185 damage. And, you know, I just tweeted out, you know, it's not 200 pumps, just to, just to confirm for people. And it was really funny because I saw some uh, multiple people comment and retweet saying, oh, this thing just hits nothing. It hits 27s only. And I, I have to look at that and be like, you must have the worst aim of <laughs> all time, man. Because like I have some awful aim. It's either you hit a hundred plus shot or nothing. Literally, it's like, it's mm. so easy to hit a bang with that pump. And I haven't decided if it's good or not because like it feels almost too easy to use if you're if you're playing against like a good player you're getting like max damaged and like 100 plus shot all the time yeah. as soon as it's in your hands and you're hitting a max oh my god i feel it's it's chef's kiss so i haven't decided if it's I good think it's or just not because of nostalgia yes it's yeah the nostalgia feeling the, the yeah, time yeah. Is I, don't, I think i don't know if the pull out time's faster but like box fighting would have slower it's, is so it? it's okay. 300 milliseconds on the hammer pump and it's 360. So okay. it's 20 I don't know, but something about whatever. box fighting this season just feels clean with it. I don't I don't know if it's, it's because just... you're old and slow. Mm. So when you edit and then press your shotgun bind, it, yeah, you, it you like have lines the time up with to line up the shot. Personal uh, input delayed to my brain. That makes sense. Yes. That makes a lot yeah, of yeah, sense. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's been my own <laughs> personal reasons why I'm yeah. like, mm, man, I'm getting a bit PC right now. It's like, yeah, because because <laughs> people can't edit and shoot straight away. Yeah. They have that like extra yeah. 60 milliseconds, yeah. which is doubling the playing field. It's nice <laughs> yeah. though. Yeah, they're, they're nerfing the fast people. They're yeah. finally, they're finally yeah. making zero ping irrelevant for once. You know, that's what people wanted. <laughs> uh, for the for the siphon thing, I think a lot of it is is exasperated by the fact that there's a lack of shield on the map, right? Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. the, the lack of shield makes it so that uh, mid-game fights when you get a third party and stuff feel shittier because obviously you don't have the HP. Also, I can't find a mini to save my life. Also, Hell heroes no. are very slow compared to obviously the things that we had in Chapter 5. We don't have splashes, we don't have things like that, we don't have a fizz to give you a bit of movement, a bit of room to, to, to go through. So, gameplay-wise, it's a little bit slower. But that means that also when you're healing, it's slower. Therefore, you get third-party more because, you know, people have more movement and grapples and stuff like that. So, um, again, 
Once more long season, I confirm it for a month of no siphon. We also knew this at the start. A lot of people were like, oh my god, mm -hmm. where's the siphon? What the hell? Like, in the blog, I, I literally tweeted out, and everyone called me, like, an idiot for it. Like, boop, you can't read <laughs> English, you fucking dumbass. But, like, it's, it literally said, um, we are still determined, uh, at the end of, uh, later in this month, we are going to determine the results of the siphon trials. Oh, that clearly means we're not going to have mm -hmm. siphon in OG Fortnite, which we don't. So, um, be on the lookout for that. Um... I think even Epic told us, like, you you guys can show that in the blog post it said, you know, we're not going to have Siphon this month. You guys can say that to everybody because we're not allowed, obviously, to leak everything in the uh, in the private Discord. So, um, you know, look out for that. It'll come soon. If they decide to do no Siphon, we're going to have some words. But uh, <laughs> me, personally, I think they're going to just do 25-25. I think that's the one that makes sense. Really? For them, Is that the so. one you think they're going to do? I think it's either 25-25 or the 75 white one. I don't think they're going to bring 50 back. Others they should have just done it. Uh, or 40 also just just a shittier 50 so like what's the I just like I think the 40 or 50 the effect of 40 or 50 is just the best way to go I think I mean yeah I think, I, I like, think it's the best one I think like yeah, what yeah. they would pick is, is those I, I think like as a just as playing it's the one that feels the most impactful where you're like if it's just the white HP over time then it's basically you're really only using that for clutches in end game late game yeah yeah and it's like that's cool but in early and mid game fights you can actually get like off to a good advantage of using the 40 50 I mean we could go for a long time on siphon but uh, I was just laughing because I'm like, season. I just don't clutch enough to feel it, you know. So I just don't really, it's like, <laughs> might as well sign yeah. up, you know. There was the, that, that was the the 75 HP one when that one got put in. We played a whole duo cash cup. And uh, I was like, you know, that's funny. I didn't really feel safe in this tournament. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, oh, wait, that's on me. <laughs> I think I said the exact same thing, bro. I was like, I didn't yeah. know, I'm I've not really felt mm -hmm. it, man. Mm -hmm. it um, yeah. Nah, it, it, it's, it's funny, though, because I think. Um, you, you, you're right in that had they had put Siphon in because it's remix and we had Siphon in chapter 2 and blah 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 and then they made their decision and decided something else it probably would have went a lot worse for them um, mm -hmm. on the shields thing is, is, is this some sort of like m mental ploy based on some study they're doing like because OG was the exact same where like finding mm -hmm. shields was just impossible and you just got chug jugs all the mm -hmm. time <laughs> or you just got like the best weapons on floor loot. Like, you would get, you know, purple pumps and stuff on floor loot. Um, and it's like similar this season. I think they changed it now so you can't get purple pumps on floor loot now. They've made Bing. that change. Um, but like the, on day one, all I saw was people tweeting, I'm finding more purple pumps than minis. Like, what are we doing here? You know? And it's mm -hmm. like, this is two OG seasons in a row now where they've done this. Is this just them like forgetting to rebalance shield because they've got us like you know it's like like drug addicts you know they pumped us up with shields for so many years now that like yeah. when we go back to the old one it's like bloody i'm, I'm cold now. Like, yeah, like, like chapter one chapter one there weren't any shields yeah i, I yeah. still remember like 2019 2018 you would run around and you would not have three bigs and six minis and in tournaments teams would not have max heals unless you landed in like the biggest poi yeah. That was oh, like yeah. the advantage of going to the best drop spots because a lot of the splits and smaller POIs you would not get max heals, and that's just how it was. And even into chapter two, I think that was the case. But over time, like they increased the amount of shields on the map, and people just got used to that. So now they hate having nothing. Yeah, secret super strat for it's not really secret good name anymore, but super strat for all of the actual Fantasia listeners are find a goddamn mending machines or vending machines yeah they are where you're gonna get your heels slurp fish you get two for 170 so you can get stacked on slurp fish and bigs and stuff so there you go mm -hmm. uh wow. I, I think we have a my this is a very familiar tier list i put a video and this is my tier list of the the loot pool currently Ooh. uh based on quite a few different factors now some of them might look a little weird because some are in comp, some are not. Like, you know, you'd think rocket launcher in C4, I'd be like, why is that not in the police nerf or the goat or the best tier? But right, they're not in right, comp. Right. So I kind of took that into account whilst making it at the same time. Uh, major thing to note, right, is when we're talking about lack of shield here, is there's so many utility items. This is the big thing that chapter one had that, you know, a lot of the later chapters didn't. Mm. The C4s, the clingers, the stinks, the port of forts, all these other items that you can find in chest. And that mm -hmm. comes from the same consumable slot a lot of the times the heal does i can't remember if that's 100 percent true yeah. but it basically just muddies up the loot pool so yeah. you know it's they, they might have a higher spawn rate but it's just impossible to find some minis at some point because there's other shit in there that's just messing with that as well 
well, ranked is basically pops now, right? Like they they made a one to one at this point, so <clears throat> it makes it, it it makes it a lot worse too, because like obviously all this loot is not stuff you can have in competitive. So I load up like a custom game just to like run around the map to check some stuff. And like it feels fine in that sense. Like I'm getting big mm. pots all the time. I'm getting minis most of the time. But like when you ra you hop into a game of ranked, this is what you have to deal with. Is you have to have all of this bullshit coming out of chests mm. that you don't want in the game of ranked, right? Uh, I didn't even know there were a few of these things in the game at this point because you know yeah. there's, there's so much. Some shit, of them but... are really hard. Like the so the, there's damage traps in, and I, I guarantee I seen you've one. not no. seen a damage trap yet. I, I didn't even know there's a bomb. campfire like trap. I only they, saw it in, so, in in e Relo in Evo Cup the other day. I was like, he's got a campfire. He's healing the helicopter Malabuka. Do you know where they spawn? In llamas and in supply drops and in vending ah, machines only. Ah. So I think the campfire. So. Everything, all the all the trap items outside of the actual traps, so the launch pads, the campfires, the traps, all are zero point zero five percent floor spawn. Wow. So you know, good luck getting a, if you want if you want to base your strategy around finding a launch pad on floor spawns. Good luck. But the traps are not on floor spawns; they're only llamas and supply drops at a zero point zero five percent. So I don't yeah. know how many tra I don't know how many llamas and like you know supply drops you're opening in one tournament but you know mathematically it's not looking good to find your your chances of getting one so why did, well, you, have, cool why did you have launch that? pads twice uh there's blue Throwable. launch pads i probably should have put a thing in. there's a throwable yeah. launch pad in the inventory and a trap one uh, so the, yeah. the yeah, trap one i put in yeah. goat yeah and the strong one because obviously it still takes name so weirdly the vending machines are bugged so if you see a purple vending machine you buy two tr launch yeah, pads from it it's one. the blue throwable ones yeah. which are kind of which Biggest is kind of troll, fucking but... scam in the game <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> but still so loot pool's kind of messy there's a lot of stuff but weapon loot pool is actually pretty good for for tournaments to be honest with you you know there's, it's relatively balanced well there's no there's no heavy snipers in in, in tournaments there's no mm -hmm. i think there's auto sniper hunting rifles but i haven't seen a single hunting rifle i think it probably gets unlocked later on the season or something yeah. so um and yeah. that the, the rest of the loot is good like movement wise like we i, I there was streams streams yesterday and it, it felt like it felt okay like the games aren't going to full heal off because mm -hmm. uh, there's not that much movement it's also very hard to get like triple grappler um in like a, in the poi right so like you're not getting that as basic movement so it's basically like last chapter five meta but with like og weapons and stuff um okay. the one thing that I, I thought was interesting is the llama thing because i feel like they changed the way that llamas worked because i've seen them randomly spawn in mid game um at least on Twitter before. So I don't know if they changed the way that the llama worked. Maybe Kinch has some insight on that. Uh, but <laughs> for some reason, I, 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 I've I seen llama just spawn in mid-game on Twitter. And then even when watching the Evil tournament, one of the games, I just see a fucking llama behind the tree for Mongo. And then another game, there's another llama behind the tree for Mr. Savage. So I don't know if they're, they're rigging it to, to make it go crazy for those guys. But <laughs> llamas aren't what? just spawning at the beginning of the game. I think what, they're spawning they like, in mid-game. What, like, do you like see them falling out of the sky? Or what, or they just appear in the mid-game? <laughs> they like, they what, just what? appear. Yeah, they literally just appear randomly in the mid-game. I, I don't like know. I've seen yeah. the clips. Yeah, see, so came to see the tweet. I'm not crazy. See? <laughs> yeah, there's one that just appeared on someone's ramp in Endgame. <laughs> just on the ramp. No. Yeah. <laughs> I need to see this clip. We need I to did it. I did. I'm going to hunt for this we clip. I think it was Teenies. I think Teeny tweeted it. Teeny. Yeah. Of course, we got we got to get this up. Course, I, think it was... I, I, I did not. What? <laughs> no, yeah, I, so I, I don't know if that's yeah, like I, some I, sort I don't of, know what's going on. Some buffing thing that they're doing to, to make it more interesting, but. Seems like a bug. I don't know. It's random. Oh, but they are in competitive llamas, so you will find them in tournaments. Mm. Okay. Which I don't think was the Whoa, case. What? That's so crazy. Yeah. That clip's wild. That's weird. I've never seen that. Okay. I, hey, boop. You're not imagining things. There you go. Yeah. I'm not. I'm not schizo. For the age was getting to it. First, I it's uh, <laughs> The footsteps. <laughs> First is the footsteps, now it's the random hunting llamas. Yeah. I've got the fucking wall with the red string and everything. There's, there's something here, guys. There's something here. Yeah, look at here. this. Look at this. So, so you just that's a random llamas in a tree, and there appears. <laughs> it just pops in. No, no. <laughs> nah, that's, that's gotta be so. a bug. Yeah, there's no way that's right. That's really. Well, well, you know, you remember when they first removed llamas from tournaments? Why that was? Because of the llama because finder people thing? were going into the yeah, yeah llama llama because they were spawn yeah. at the start of the game. So yeah. maybe it's intentional that they spawn at like random times. So you can't just look <laughs> yeah. at the beginning of the game where all the llamas are. Wait, know. that makes perfect sense, though. Mm, okay. Wait, that actually cook. makes perfect sense. Yeah, because now they would they have them. developed it like that? Though? Would they have put in the time to prevent that from happening? That's the quick question. I feel like they would have just made somewhere <laughs> like an animation if it was intentional, like where right. it just like, falls like a from UFO the sky comes or... from the sky. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
if if someone from Epic is listening, you don't need to fix this bug because it's actually a it's great funny. feature. Yeah, it's a yeah. great yeah, feature. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's so interesting. Llamas just one. Okay, oh, this season's crazy than I thought. <laughs> um, <laughs> can't wait to jump in. Is there anything else on the new season that anyone wanted to mention? Any any burning? I have a pet, one pet peeve, right? Go and on. it kind of goes back Go to the through. heels, and that's they remove the ability for big ammo crates to have a hundred percent heal spawn. That's like, annoying. It's down yeah. to thirty five percent now, and it's split between minis, bigs, and med kits. And I swear it's a med kit every any time you get one of those heels. It's just I'm like, oh come on, because you know you, you're you're needing heels. I need minis. I need to find them. I'm hunting around the map, and you yeah. see this godsend in front of you. It's the big ammo box. Yes, you hit it. Fucking nothing comes out of it. It's so frustrating. So Man. that alone would fix a lot of the like health shield issues that are there if you just bump that to hundred percent. That'd be. Then you like the joy of the lottery. Like, <laughs> whoa, 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 one in three. The thrill. <laughs> I'm gonna hit so, it. <laughs> the good thing is that uh, like you know people were moaning about not having two hundred pumps back, but they are because everyone is one hundred and fifty or one hundred HP. So True. you can just get a max regardless. So said There's actually more one, one pumps. <laughs> <laughs> Levin, Levin missed out on the best part of this chapter, like at the start of it, when you had purple spices everywhere, and then they yeah. did the big part changes, so he actually had some shield as well. He missed out on the best part, like the best version of this chapter, yeah. unfortunately for I him. I might as well just not play and play Black Ops 6 instead. Since <laughs> just play, just play Reload. Reload's better. So. Yeah, sure, I'll jump into Reload then, I guess. Um, look, well, with the new season became uh, more changes than just the actual game and the map itself, because we had an absolute chaos fest of roster mania trio switch ups people are starting to panic because they realize fncs is coming thick and fast they're trying to lock in their you know the best versions of trios as possible and a lot of big names switched up their team so if you've not been paying attention and you've not been locked in um i think the biggest and obvious one which is one we actually spent a lot of time talking about last episode so good to see something actually happened with it peter Bot has finally dropped Booga. But he's not just dropped Booga. We can't just stop there, because people are going to go, you're just hating on Booga again. No, he dropped cold as well. Peabot is no longer playing with the Booga cold. or cold. He is now playing with Bolts and Poyo. He's picked up Poyo again. Bolts is in his prime. He's squatting with those guys, and he's left Booga and cold in the dust. React. Ooh. Yes, yeah, that's that's noise. I'll just give you that. What the Next hell was that? What the no. fuck was that? <laughs> so I feel like I've heard too much of you know, this now. I uh, that's primal. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. So yeah, I think that's a good idea. Actually, there's a there's a clip of uh, you know what, explaining. Yeah. Yeah. So oh, this is you, yeah, chat, I'm actually on you again. Chat, I'm not gonna lie. Like, I should not never drop point in the first place. I should have just uh, been IGing since the start. I don't know why. Like, I thought I couldn't. It's a little bit of brain rot for sure. Dude, like, chat, is this season this bad? Like, why are my frames dropping to zero every second, <laughs> man? Average oh Fortnite God. complainer. At least yeah. finally admit it. Nah, I didn't drop Poyo. Bro, I already told you guys, I didn't drop Poyo because he was bad. Like, I dropped him because I didn't want to IGL, but like, in tarp and shit. And Poyo is not tarping either. I'm just gonna tarp in IGL, uh... Yeah, so, I think, uh, I think Peterbot is an avid Fantasia listener. Because this, <laughs> this is the exact conversation. Was it two weeks ago? Four weeks ago? Three weeks I don't know. Years, when, yeah. Whenever the hell the last time I was here was. Uh, when we talked about, I said, all of the success that Peterbot has had, has come when he is leading, he is tarping, putting him in the back tarp, he's not playing the same role as he ever has. He's not going to be the one making decisions and, you know, going with Booga and whatnot, where Booga's going to be leading. You know, you could see in some of their tournaments where Booga was going one direction and Peter Bot just goes a completely different. He is used to leading, he's used to be the one in charge. So for him to, like, try and split off and do something different, I don't know, never really made sense to me. With this, now you've just got him leading, Bolts and Poyo, who have just proven that they are, you know, capable of winning almost every single trio cash cup, every single tournament. They're proven success with Peterbot and Poyo already. Bolts and Peterbot have proven their success playing in a bunch of duo cash cups last season as well. It's like, now we have an actual, like, god trio. Yeah. Like, the all-star. It's funny because, like, <laughs> I, I always thought the, the narrative of him being like, well, yeah, like, I, I don't want to be the person tarping, which 
clearly felt like it came from like a selfish place of like, I want to be the one doing the damage, doing the job. But un unlike you would think in a traditional sense, like you think in a traditional sense that IGL, uh, you know, doesn't get many opportunities and like the fragger is the one that can be selfish and stuff. It's the easiest role to be selfish in is as the leader. Mm. Like he can full top where he wants, goes where he wants. He can like cheap top and like low key fuck over his teammates a bit if he wants, if he feels like he can get to a better spot. Whereas like as a fragger, if you're being selfish and like you're not like doing where what your IGL's telling you or going where your IGL's taking you, like it's so much easier to get punished. Where like as the IG, like he can bait bolts and and and, and point mm -hmm. out infinitely if he wants to, just for and, the kinch stats. That's right, just it, yeah. if he wants all the damage and that's what he mm -hmm. wants. Like he can do that now much easier if he's the person like leading and going where he wants to go. So yeah, mm -hmm. I'm glad he's he's come to his senses in that case. I also think on that point, there's two real ways that you can be a good tarper in trios. You know, it's not really the same as duos. You can be the guy who maybe is more like a seti who sets up a tarp and comes and lets the other two do whatever they want and then come back i haven't watched say in years this is more historical <laughs> from, from what i remember a from a while ago, yeah. Let, let's see if this is still the case but you could be someone who like, to do creates a good tarp. True, exactly he's true, back true. It's maybe they're, they're, it's still relevant right you can set up a good tarp you can put yourself in dead side positions you can keep yourself away from everyone you can be like a real leader or you can be like a fraggy igl who just tarps you towards other teams and all three of you shits on everyone together right so mm -hmm. you know I think it's kind of obvious which one of those two Peter Bot falls into. Mm, uh, no wonder. Out of those. Yeah, exactly. And I, th I don't know, it just makes a lot of sense. It's, it's good that we, you know, there's a reason we all get paid to analyze this game. Because I feel like every single time we talk about like a specific trio or something like that, it always comes back around and it keeps happening, right? Like we keep talking about this. Like even Peter Bot admits it in the, in the clip we just listened to it. Like it was very clearly an ego play. Like we mm. called it from the start. Like, he wants to be the star. He wants to be the guy at the top of the leaderboard. But then I, I, I talked about it last. I don't. Was it on the podcast? I don't. I, it was either on the podcast or before the podcast. Like there was a, a kinch damage stat about everyone's damage in trio cash cups, and Big Pete was not mm. on that top ten. Mm. And I said, in, I put a message in the group chat. I was like, dude, I bet you Pete's looking at this and he's fucking pissed because he <laughs> loves to see himself at the top of those leaderboards. He loves to see himself on there. And then a week later, brother Pete's coming in and taking ports away. Uh, ports? Ports. Oh, ports? Mm. Ooh, he did. He took ports, ports away. Ports. Mm. He took ports away and now he's got them in the trio. I am a little bit sad because I, I, I do think there was potential for like rapid bolts and Poyo. I think that was like... That felt like the consistent trio, but like this is obviously mm. a better choice, right? With Peter Bond mm. involved, so um, it it is good. I'm, I'm glad he finally comes to his senses, and you know, like I said the last time, if there's any world where Peter Bond can win three out of three, is if he takes away the competition of the other relevant trio in NA. Now there's no longer a relevant trio because he took the best parts of everybody else. Like I don't think there's many that can actually compete. Uh, Brother Cold isn't as much of a grinder, right? Um, Poyo. Uh, obviously, he's not feel about now, and Cold is now looking for a trio, and then Rapid. Obviously, you know he doesn't have the fragging power of the best oh, fraggers in the name anymore. Poor so. Rapid, he's got yeah. the worst yeah. mistake here. You know, he Rapid had, like, the is, best is he getting trio. the Poyo treatment. He's getting the Poyo treatment now. <laughs> like, that guy is so good, but like, now he's just getting thrown into the. Du I mean, we'll talk about his trio in a second, but yeah, not maybe not the dust, but like you know, not as good. As it's, just, it's just not bolts and Poyo. <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. you know what I'm saying? Um, Yes, yeah, it's, it's 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 interesting in that sense, I guess. But, you know, Kinch, we've not had you on the show, right? So we we've obviously spoken so much about this trio and depth, um, and Peter Bot specifically and like his options. So I want to like know from you your thoughts on this move for him as a trio, and like, did you sort of see this coming? Like, are there any surprises in how we've gotten to this point? And also to wrap it up, if you think things stay this way with Peter Bot. I'm going to be honest, I've been trying to ignore that bit of trio drama a little bit because <laughs> I've been getting a little bit of grief from some of their fans <laughs> for blaming all the stats for all this snakening. <laughs> uh, I never thought about that part of it, yeah. You have to, you have to do I've, I've it. I've had a few, a few uh, suspect messages saying, why did you post these stats? Yeah, you know, I'm saying it in, in the nicest way possible. It's not that way. Yeah, of course. Like this. <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah. They were not that polite. Uh, you know, you, you made Booger get dropped. You made 
Did I get snaked? That was, Booga's, that was actually Ruby. Booga's old you know. that sent you that message. <laughs> Booga logged in, like, you piece of shit, why did you do this to Booga? Fun Booga. Yeah, why did you, you've ruined Fortnite posting these stats? Like, I don't know. <laughs> So, so I've been kind of ignoring all that drama. Yeah, you, know, you have a you have a great amount of power. See how it works out. Mm. You have a Apparently great amount I have of way power. More power than I should. Like have, you could fuck up a trio by like giving some guy the worst damage stats possible of a trio that's yeah. beefing, just to, like to spark up some shit. Me personally, mm, I would be instigating, but I think you're crazy. more of an integral guy than I am. I didn't lie about this. We we recruited yeah. the biggest booga hater here. <laughs> like, we thought we were yeah, booger yeah, haters. Yeah. Like, the idea shit. that someone's dropping booger because he doesn't do enough damage, like, it's just ridiculous. Yeah. Like, he's, no, he's no. tarping, he's IGLing. Like, what are you on about? This is what they all say. I these people aren't dropping it like, for, them for this. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, a, yeah. a part of me wants to hope that's not the case, but, you know, the, the fans would, would tell you otherwise. I think most of the time players are already looking for a reason to drop people. So like when they have justifiable stats, like see, yeah, you, exactly. you fucking mm. suck, mate. But Look like, at your damage. Uh, they there you go, someone. you're dropped. Exactly, but like we, we've all played the game, right? Maybe not at that high of a level. We've all played the game, and one thing that is consistent, I think, amongst any level Fortnite is you can always feel the guy on the team who's the dud. And yeah. You always feel it, <laughs> and there's always the one guy who you're like, any small opportunity, like if he milks and he dies first, mm. you're like, bro, how do you die? Like, you're on him straight, I'm checking like, replays. Because, I'm checking you know replays. I mean? like, yeah. like you're on that guy straight because you like you kind of yeah. know he's the dud. So as soon as you get an excuse, and maybe this is where you really are at fault, Kinch, right? Because now that we have like things like the Kinch that's still, that are so easily available, it's like after every tournament, if that bed is low down, <laughs> tch, <laughs> you just know. Because you already feel it when you're playing, like, yeah, yeah, this guy, oh man, I, we had a bad tournament, but I feel like you were dying a lot. Okay, let me yeah. just double check that to secure. Yeah, you died a lot, yeah, man. What yeah, are you doing? Yeah. I think, didn't the whole reason Peterbot was shouting at Booga for three hours come off a kinch stat? Because he saw the damage stat or something, and then, like, <laughs> that, it became the bullying of Booga. Um, so, yeah, you you have a lot of power, kinch. You gotta be careful, man. Yeah. People are coming yeah. for you, mates. Don't post any kinch sure stats about Brazilians. <laughs> so them, the Brazilians are not as I nice as the Americans no, and no. Europeans, mate. You don't want to... It makes it the fault of guys. the guy that's the dud in the team, doesn't it? Ooh, not the guy that's the, the ultimate, ultimate booger hate. <laughs> <laughs> I, I didn't say it's it not my fault booger sucks. Kinch 2024. <laughs> there you go. He said it, not me. <laughs> that's crazy. Wow. This is a comment, so this one's going to be interesting. <laughs> I know, I know. I had, uh, a, you know I, I had a slight tangent that was along the same lines there as... As I've had a, we're talking about duds. I am literally the dud in my trio, of course, you know. right? Who's, who's you your trio? Know. Is, is it locked so in there? With, uh, Oh yeah, we're playing me, DJ, and Tomzy. So Tomzy, <laughs> bro, Tomzy, I don't know how we managed to get into this position, but it's funny because every tournament, so we, we made a, we made a Middle East finals last week. First, yeah. first fucking week. So we're cooking, right? Every tournament we played, we played like three regions that day, played everyone. Every tournament I've checked so far. Bomzy's had like a 2.7 damage ratio. Every, no matter the region, what it is, Jeez. this guy's fucking cooking. And and every time we die, DJ goes, Tomzy, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> like, it, does, it doesn't matter. He's got your back, man. He's got your back. He does. He's got my back. <laughs> and it was funny because we were playing trios yesterday. Just put some ranked. And I said to him, I was like, you know, it was because he did doing the same thing in ranked. It was like, I die. And then like, 10 minutes later, Tomzy dies. And DJ's like, Tomzy, like, what is this? <laughs> and I'm just sitting there like, I was like, you know, you never blame me. And he's like, yeah, I just feel bad. I was like, oh. <laughs> and I hit on the elderly, I man. That. But you know what? I that's like, I get that. I respect leadership. that. Yeah, no, that's amazing Very leadership. Because so. if they just dogged on you all the time, like, it wouldn't make you play any better. Mm -hmm. I know. know? Like, I yeah. know when I'm yeah. playing like shit. You don't you know need I mean? to tell me. Yeah, so the no. fact that he doesn't. Fair play. So there yeah. you go. As the fellow dud on my trio, I feel you, man. I know your pain. There you I go. My trio doesn't know it yet, but I, I know your pain. <laughs> they, um, they, they're checking the stats, trust me. Yeah, when we eventually play it, they're going to they're gonna feel that. Um, yeah, no, it's interesting. I mean, Peter Bo Bo Boyo, bloody hell, man. <laughs> the, the, the it was, it was, uh, we already determined it was Poltz. Po Poltz, Poltz, sorry, yeah, not yeah. Boyo. Poltz. <laughs> Boyo or Pulse? Let us know the comments. the whole trio, not just the two of them. Boyo Bots? Boyo Bots? Boyo Bots? Bolt Spot? Okay, something like that. Let us know in the comments what mm. their trio name is. Um, are they going to stick together? <clears throat> Quick reactions, yes, no? You think this is going to be the trio? They'll win the first one. I can, I can yeah, see this one sticking. They'll just win like 10 tournaments in a row, probably. Mm. They'll stick. Yeah. <laughs> 
I, and again, another quick one. Is there any trio on NA that can match these guys, you think, right no. now? No. Don't let you finish. Just no. <laughs> All right. All right. <laughs> on to the next one. Okay. <laughs> but, for, but who, right? Like, I, they might get conned off spawn and then another team can, like, do good. Sure, I get that. That that might be... Mm. I don't think they stay on con this whole year like they did last... Or like Peter Bonpoint did last year. But, you know, the, the question is, like, who? what team would even be up to their standard season after season? Because... Off the dome, you know, you think, okay, Cold's there. Who does he go play with? Would he be grinding? Probably not. Um, so yes. you immediately are missing. Oh, yeah, what happened to Batman Booger? Why is Brother just getting thrown out of every... Like, I haven't seen him with any mm. options yet. Um, he had a good trio to start with, I swear. I can't remember who it was. Yeah, I think he has a go for it now. I think that's probably why mm, he's done it because of that. So that the it. interesting thing is Booger's actually landing on Peterbot, Poyo, and Bolts. So uh, but, mm. but Booger's staying true to the to the threats. So he's landing there with Aviv and Reet uh, at the Dog Pound. And there was a clip yesterday of Scrims where Poyo 1v3 them. <laughs> I saw, I saw, I saw that. Yeah. that. Um, yeah. It's not looking good. Uh, uh, I don't think there's any mm. other options. In I mean, they literally got the best point per fragger, they got the best fragger, and then they got the best support player in Poyo. Like, there's no one... Like, you have all the builds together, but no one's putting it together. Like, there's no secondary team. Like, you can get a cord together with a rapid, maybe, but it doesn't seem like they're willing to do that, right? Um... I mean, we might as well talk about the other NHL because we're going to EU after this. But uh, Poyo, uh, sorry, Rapid is apparently playing with clicks and muzz. So, like, I, 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 that one doesn't really make sense to me. But uh, I guess um, that's a thing. I mean, it's a bit of a, it's a downgrade. Like, let's be real for for Rapid, oh, yeah. but he is he is an IGL, and ultimately, he's clearly shown he's a very good IGL. So, you know, he's just replacing Rise in that team. I don't know where Rise has gone now. Who knows? It's all muddled about. But uh, Rapid replacing that. He's going to be someone who can lead Clicks and Muzz really well. We'll see yeah. if Clicks and Muzz can follow. That's that's more my question, you know, going forward. I'm just seeing a whole bunch of mid on, on NA right now. I don't know what to <laughs> yeah. I'll be honest. So, so, like, there's a bunch of other teams as well that I think had some, like, shake-ups and, like, people who are trying. Um, I think one that's interesting to me, just because I didn't think it would happen, is I think Acorn Canada are playing with... Who's the third? It's not Dukes. It's somebody else. Can't even remember the third. But like that, I I did. I wanted to. I'm curious about how Acorn and Canada do together because obviously both like to IGL. Maybe Aegis. I'm just guessing. It's Miro. It is Miro. Cool. Producer calls. Producer calls. With the board, knowledge. Man. Yeah. Um. <laughs> a like Canada, Miro, and uh, Acorn. Like that's a weird one because. I actually think Miro and Trios can like get back to some of his better form. Um, but like, again, the dynamic of Kanada and Acorn, I wonder how that goes. They're also going to stream. I don't know how that works with like Kanada. I don't think Acorn and Miro enjoy when they're someone else is streaming. Well, I, I've, I've, li I've watched a good amount of Kanada recently playing with Acorn and they just keep, keep shouting, I'm the monster over and over again. <laughs> Uh, no, the vibes are great between them. The great vibes friends. are crazy. Yeah, good. No, they, so, they're they're yeah. great friends. I know that and for a fact. But yeah. Miro, so Miro and Kanada make sense because they're both kind of like messy, scuffed players who never die. Acorn, I'm not really sure if he fits into that rhetoric as much, you know. Uh, and I'm imagining Acorn will be leading in IGLing, whereas you got Fragger Kanada now. So like, how is that gonna go? Uh, I don't know if there's been a. I'd obviously been trios for so long, so I don't know if he's really been in that position in so long. So it's kind of hard yeah. to say if that one will do well all all i know is with that trio miro will just never die he'll die you know top five every game just the same as always he's just impossible to kill yeah um yeah things things are things are moving in and we'll see where things land come fnts time though um we'll keep track of the trio cash cups though as the you know remix tournaments go on uh over on eu though some really interesting things on eu of course veno queasy and pixie was a very interesting trio that people are sort of looking at to be one of the best the results never quite matched that and now that trio has fragmented into different places veno has now replaced uh chap on mm -hmm. vico and flixie's trio which is very interesting and then Queasy now has decided to go back to playing with some Balkans where he, he did find, you know, his first ever FNCS win playing with Balkans and Trulex and Juriki. And now he is playing with Teeny and Chicho, which is, you mm -hmm. know, a very, very interesting option. Two of the best players available. What do we make of those two new trios? We'll start off, I guess, with the Balkan boys. 
So I, I was talking about this on stream yesterday, uh, yesterday day before yesterday during the Evo Cup, and I was like talking about uh, like what, what, like the uh, the play style was interesting there because uh, I, I I talked about and mentioned obviously we had Queasy in the, on the podcast and he talked about fragging power, right? So obviously Queasy Pixie Veno is probably more fragging power than a Queasy Teeny Chicho. Um, but the way that this new trio plays, Queasy said they're just sending it height, you know, which I guess <laughs> makes sense with two aggressive jumping box type of players. Um, I'm I'm not sure. I'm not fully sure if this is a better iteration of it in terms of like overall like uh, baseline skill level, right? Like Queasy Pixie Venom makes more sense, but they did it. It just didn't work. So it, it's kind of funny that sometimes a weaker type of trio, but like maybe better chemistry, better vibes, maybe a better sort of fitting playstyle together might end up doing better. So um, it's one of those things that NA doesn't really have, but in EU, we're getting all these cliques together, essentially of, you know, we have the Russians, we have the Polish, we have the, the French, and now we have the Balkans coming together. Like, maybe that brings more success, being able to vibe with your homies that speak the same language. So uh, I'm not fully sure yet, and, and Queasy said, uh, you know, we're just sending it height. So uh, it should be interesting to see how that does. Uh, I think the most important mm. thing, obviously, is making finals. And we saw with Tini and Chicho, they also didn't make any single final except for one with Opmo. Uh, but that was obviously top 198. Now for these trio cash cups and obviously future trio cash cups, it's top 33. So it's going to be even harder to make it into finals. So uh, for, for that, I think that's going to be curious to see like, how will they do to actually make it into the finals. In mm. the finals, I, I think they'll do well, but making it into it is, is, might be an issue. I mean, there's two points on that. There's like, Queasy really stuck by his words where he said, I wanted someone who can just jump in box and insta kill someone and yeah. he picks up Teeny. I'm like, that. He said That's it him. and yeah. he stuck with his word. That's absolutely true. I don't know. He obviously, Chicho is very much so very capable of playing like that as well, but it's not really someone we've not seen him play like that because he's been playing with True Lane for a long time. So, no. yeah, we'll see how unleashed Chicho becomes on that. It's actually, I'm actually about this, True. I think I'm more interested to see how they play when Teeny isn't IGLing. Because that's yeah. been his kind of thing all this time. Like, yeah. you know, how will he play in trios now? Because he is a nuts fighter. You know, it's kind of the it, one the same thing with Miro, where it's impossible to kill sometimes. Is the controller movement is so good. <laughs> um, and, you know, Kuizov's a great IGL. So I think I, I see a lot of success. Do I think it's like a. They, they could win a random FNCS. Do I think they're going to be like the most yeah. dominant trio? Maybe not. But, like, I, I definitely see them being like a strong contender if they manage to stick. I'm really curious about these guys. I could see them winning an FNCS. Um, again, we'll see what happens with Chapter 6 because that's just like a wild thing to just throw out there, right? When we really just don't know what's going on. But like the composition of this trio to me like makes sense. Um, so I'm, 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 I'm excited. And it's funny because I remember like having like a bunch of just drones and I'm, and I'm just going to straight up call them drones, be like... Uh, it, I think it was part of the Queasy interview episode where, where you know, I made a big deal of mentioning, like, speaking, like, your native language and, like, the advantage mm. that has seemingly had, of course, right? Sometimes correlation does not always lead to, to it meaning that it's, it's true. But, like, when you look at previous FNCS winners, there is a lot of people who have clearly benefited from being able to just speak the native language as fluent as they might be in another language. Um mm -hmm. So I'm interested to see how Queasy does now. He gets a chance to play with with, with a good Balkan team again. Because even when he won with Trulex and Jerky, they were punching above their weight, right? Like mm. people who knew expected them to top five. Like I, I remember for my FNCS predictions that season, I think I had them like third or something. Like I, I expected them to do well. Lots of people expect them to do well. But, uh, you know, this is a team that definitely can compete. The one that I think is interesting though, Vico, Flixie, Dropping Chap, to play with Veno. I mean, Veno's an interesting one because he's, he, you know, as much as he's probably one of the most disliked players right now in the community, he's a very <laughs> desirable player. Yeah, mm -hmm. you know, he's a very desirable player. Like, he's one of the best players in the world, regardless of what people think. He showed that towards the end of last year, playing of clicks, um, that he is an incredibly valuable player. He can do it all. And one of the seemingly what we thought was going to be one of the best trios in, in, in Vico, Flixie, and Chap decided, no, we don't want to play a Chap anymore. We want Venno instead. Any early thoughts on, 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 on whether this is the right move for those two playing with Venno? It's a, it's a bit strange for me because now, you know, you've got Flixie who throughout Chapter 5 sort of learned to become more of an IGL, right? And you, you led the, you kind of the IGL with Vico. 
And now you've got Benno coming in who is can do everything. He can IGL, he can frag. It's like, how is that dynamic actually going to work? Are they going to know what their own roles are? Are they going to just like split the leadership? Is Flixie just going to go back to becoming a fragger? Um, I don't know. It was it was a lot more clear for me with Chap in the team how that you know how the trio works. So I don't know. To to repeat what I said about the the, the Peterbot thing is like, what's such great analysts? Because we talked about this two weeks ago again, and it was like. How does an ultra fragging trio work out when it comes to an FNC Grand Finals lobby, right? They're doing super well in this trio mm. cash cups, which are open set lobby as open lobbies with six, seven lobbies in total, where you can drop a 31 kill win. But like when it comes to an FNC Grand Finals lobby where you need surge players, you need the Venos and Thomas HDs of the world, that's where maybe a trio like Vico Flixie and Chap might start to falter. So I actually really like this change because like okay. Chap is a very up and coming player, is very good. And his plays I think worked really well with Teeny when they played duos, right? Jump in your box, play super aggro. But when it comes to trios where that's not really much of a not as much as an option depending on the meta of course i think prone uh chap is way more prone to making mistakes than someone than veno is who's a lot more experienced in the role um <clears throat> one of the interesting things is though is that i know vico said he would never go back to english comms after playing with pink yeah no i i, I mm -hmm. hate speaking english i only want to speak german from now so to now have veno who you know is going to be the igiano and the torper and then having vico flicks in the back top in theory it kind of makes sense too because like you know vico flicks have great chemistry like they were really good at fighting as a duo. So you put those brothers in the back tarp, they're going to do the same thing. Fuck it. If they're speaking Joe in the back tarp and Venno <laughs> screaming in English in the front tarp, nine, nine, nine. Like, like, maybe that works. Fuck it. Maybe that works. Um, I, I like it. Um, I, I do think there might be some conflict because I know Venno, Venno loves to talk shit. And I, he talked a bit of shit about, about Flixie like a few times on Twitter, right? Like he's never going to win an FNCS. Like that's maybe water on the mm. bridge now, but... If there's disagreements, <laughs> I could see that potentially being an issue. Um, I like it. I think I think it would work well, and I think it will work well. I think the the growing pains is going to be the hard part to get used to the transition of everything as well. Mm. So, to, to, especially to like, no, go ahead. I, forgot, I, forgot. I was going to say like the, especially when you think about like the personalities of like Vico and whatnot, where you know, you he needs a teammate that brings him up, not pushes him down in a sense from a personality mm -hmm. perspective and, yeah. and Vino is not that person <laughs> for his teammates most yeah. of the time you know he's, he seems to apply quite harsh uh, harsh rulings and you know some people like that it works for some people but I don't know if that would work well in with like Vico and I don't know how Flixie is with that like, that kind of thing as well like you know I don't know how the, the chemistry will be if, they, if some things go wrong and if they have to argue but on the flip side I think you know, say you're taking this team to like a global championships, like this is a much more global championship winning team than the, with Chap in my eyes, which yeah. maybe where they're looking ahead, maybe that's the decision made. Mm. When I, you add Vino to a team, it usually just gets better, I think. Yeah, I, I, I think it definitely is more of like a long term thinking thing. I'd love mm. to speak to Raz. Maybe we just get Raz on the podcast and like, you know, ask him, but I'm sure he's he, all he, of their he, coaches he, now. Yeah, he has all of them. The coach of bloody everybody, but yeah. but you, so this was something that they were cooking up for a while because I remember when Venno first told me that they asked him to play, and it was like a couple of weeks ago. So they had been trying to cook mm. this up for quite a bit, and I remember at the time just feeling a bit bad for Chap because like they didn't <laughs> Chap didn't play bad, <laughs> so mm. no. I, I almost felt bad. Wrong, like, no. Yeah, like in in so this came after like one of the more the most recent true cash cups towards the end of last season, and after that specific cash cup, I remember just being like. The chap played bad and like, you know, Vico posted like his cash cut video and you go back and watch it. Chap never died for us, never really was making any mistakes. It seems. Well, so it's like, usually. yeah, it's like, it, it doesn't, you know, as much as now chap sort of left in the dust as a result of this, I, it, I, it's a bit harsh. Cause again, I don't think it's that he's bad or it didn't work. It's just, again, when you're thinking long-term, the type of tournaments they're trying to win, the environments they're trying to be in, I'm, I'm sure mm. there was something that like Raz or somebody else saw that was like, even though it's not a big problem now, I don't think this is going to work down the line, uh, thinking in the future. So, yeah, it'll be interesting to see what ends up happening with, with Chap as a result of this. And Pixie, because Pixie, again, is another player who just looked on the rise, looked very promising. Um, and now just, they don't have anybody to really go to. Well, they have each Chap other, also. I guess. <laughs> yeah, they can just hold hands. That'd be lovely. Uh, Chap also got dumped by TD as well in duo. So it's yeah. like, 
he's just been success after success and has just still been dropped regardless. <laughs> maybe maybe he's maybe he's starting time to start speculating about like his does his ego mm. just stink or something like personality wise? Mm. Are people just like yeah, I just can't be asked playing with this guy, you know? Maybe so the ego's that, too big. That thing that you said, Levin, kind of correlates with when they did badly that one cash cup and didn't. Uh, I think they dudded like eight games in a row in the finals because they like perma landed wrath. So I wonder if there's something there of like. They needed like a strong direction in the trio to like say no, this is not good because like when you got three German fraggers jumping in box, you know maybe maybe the brain sort of gets left behind in that sense. So like Venno, as as much as he is a bit of a hothead sometimes, he is someone that does think about the game rationally and logically. So he doesn't probably he might be the the force in the trio that that tells you like yeah, now we're not gonna do this, we're gonna play this way, and that yeah. might be what they exactly need when you mm -hmm. know Razru is not in the call because you know. At the end of the day, every year is an end game towards globals, right? You can't have a coaching call in globals. You need that person in that call. That uh, you need someone that can sort of lead you when things go awry. So, um, yeah. I think that's fitting uh, for Chap and, and Pixie. Again, it's the issue of being in EU. Again, like there's such limited spots at the top, especially for tier ones, and when all the tier ones are going to their own language, now you got these two brothers who have. No real options in EU. I mean, I've seen Pixie retweet his looking for trio tweet like four times, thinking it's gonna make a difference. You know, like yeah. like the, we saw the tweets, Pixie. Like there's there's no real options in EU left for him. Um, I I have no clue who Chap and Pixie are gonna end up playing with. Like, the only one that could maybe make sense if like Trulex decides to split from like I Drop and Marius, because like those like Pixie and and Chap is maybe an upgrade in that sense in terms of uh, accolades recently compared to an eye drop and marius like maybe that's the only one that kind of makes sense is trulex chap and pixie but are they really gonna play under trulex's domain of surge basing and not jumping mm. in box i don't know i think they might have too much of an ego for that compared to a marius and eye drop who are probably gonna listen to, to brother trulex you just have too much talent in here Although it's a bit concerning now that they can't find a trio, I don't think they should be that concerned because everyone's going to split and change again. Not everyone, <laughs> maybe. A few will stick. Yeah, but few, yeah. We've never seen like a chapter where people don't just move around a ton. Yeah. So options will open up, and I'm sure he'll find plenty. Yeah, I'd agree. Um, yeah. Well, look, we'll keep following the changes within the trios because there, there is a lot of them. Um, but it's time for everyone's favorite part of the show. You know what this part is? Recently, you ain't been there in a while. What, what, what part am I talking about? Uh, and those are the ice spice bar again. Is that your favorite part? <laughs> well, there was a lack of that in the event, as, as I was very disappointed by. But. Let's 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 say thank you to our biggest super thankers. This week we have one super ah, thanker, one goat, just one, and here he is flexing his muscles Ooh. again. Bloody <laughs> hell! Look at this guy. <laughs> that a new He's, picture? No, no, same one. <laughs> I think he zoomed in a bit more though this week. Uh, yeah. um, he said, y'all glazed me crazy. I'll be here every week to increase the female viewership. Bro's got the same strats as me. Uh, I get it. Yeah. Sure. Um, yeah, I, I, I said <laughs> I'm sure you pack abs. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Um, thank you for putting some respect on Oatley's name. I will say his teammates sell him far more than he sells because he wants to camp and play the format and OCE players simply want to W key. I wanted to ask, when do you guys think we'll see the craziest snake and ins to start? Can't lie, peak drama period was so fun and made the lead up to FNCS insane. Oh, and he edited his comment because <laughs> easy, he realized it has begun. It has mm -hmm. begun. Correct. Um, I agree though. Uh, snake seasons like was always one of the most exciting parts of like the lead up to an FNCS, you know? Just adds that extra Especially bit of drama. Trios. Yeah. Duos is kind of boring, but trios like... I don't know. I feel like the, the the changes are just more interesting. I think it's going to be one week before FNCS week one. That's Ooh. that's that's it. Yeah. You know, last minute. This is just someone's going to panic. The first go at it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. First round. Yeah, There'll be more. There'll be more for sure. Yeah. Thanks. Well, thank you, about uh, Aesthetics, as well. Again for blessing us with your muscles. I I got to check the female viewership now after this app to make sure that it's <laughs> going up in line. Two hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. Reese is on this one, so it's obviously gone up. <laughs> right, yeah. Naturally, naturally, naturally. Um, before we wrap up the episode, I could not do an episode here without a top five game. It just wouldn't be right. So mm. we got a quick little oh, top yeah. five game. This week's one 
get 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 your your, your apps up, guys. Get ready. This week's one's very interesting because I'm ready. In this week's top five game, somebody has a clear advantage. Um, did he, did it, this guy, this guy gonna, make the stats for this I'm one? Sure. <laughs> Which I'm not going to say, is, is this, gonna is, say is, why is, someone has Reese, are you okay? Reese, are you <laughs> I don't think I'm okay. It's just like, All right. no <laughs> Bro, I couldn't figure it out. Anyway, uh, are you guys logged in? Are you guys logged in? Yes, I am ready. Solo reload. Yeah, 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 that is me. I did jump down. Okay, this week's top five is... Who are the top five total elimination leaders in Chapter 5 Season 4 Trio Cash Cup Finals? Which oh. five players across oh the world? God. This is a kinch tweet. It, could be, it, it, is a kinch, it is a kinch tweet. So let's see if Kinch actually remembers the own list he tweeted out. Get your answers in. I will give you guys a hint. I will give you guys oh, a hint. I've already, I just put it in as quick oh, as I could. Oh, so Reece, I Reece, can tie Reece, it. Reese it. got it. Reese oh my, he's got cheating it. No, no, wow. no, no, no. I, I, this week, I'm win if there's a tie, I'm winning on speed. <laughs> he's, I hope Reese didn't cheat. I will give you guys uh, a hint. No, no, no. If you haven't put your answers in already, yeah, there is it. not as many EU and NA players as oh. you might think. Oh, I got it all, crap. I got it all wrong then. <laughs> yeah. uh, That's what I'm thinking of. And who was it? Okay. Ninja, I don't even know who does well in EOC anymore. Oh, this I'm, guy, obviously. I'm, yeah. I'm gonna have to press you for time. Come on, boot. Uh, I need one more region. I need one more region. Ah. Can't you go your answers uh, in? You got your top five. Uh, in? No, 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 no. Uh, fucking. Uh, okay, Kinch you know, I just. Too, I, I don't mind losing just for this though, for the shout out there. Yeah. K Kinch is about to get his bloody. He's about to look at his old tweets and just bloody get it. Come on, mate. Get, get it in. Come on. I'm in. Okay, boots locked uh, in. Boots locked in. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. I'm, I'm it'd, be, it'd be embarrassing I mean, if Kinch loses. If Kinch, honestly. Kinch, if he loses, it's going to be so so sad. <laughs> I'd uh, be so embarrassed. I'm pretty sure I got like. I'm going to say I got three of them right. I don't okay. think I got all five. Let, let's see. Reese, I'm in the wrong what, order as well. What, what was your top five this week, Reese? <laughs> I just fucking rapid fired in with the biggest names we could possibly think of okay. off the dome. <laughs> Peter Botton Poyle was the, the first two. Names. Okay. Uh, which obviously, since you said NA and OC aren't, aren't you aren't there. Oh, we got a sneak peek. There you go. And then it's put Bolts Vino Vico. I was just like, you know what? Just just wow. get them. Just get all the fraggers in. Hope, like throw the darts at the dartboard as quick as you can Jesus. and get it submitted. I like I like this approach. This is a, this really is a like new approach. approach. Yeah. I'm usually slow and and methodical, so I've tried the opposite. And then maybe we'll meet somewhere in the middle next week. Okay, mm. I, I like this. Boop, you locked in next. What was your top five? So I tried to go a little bit more like multi-regional, so I, I kind of dudded one of them. So I put Peterbot at the top for sure. I put Vico, Bolt, Coyota, and Brother Oatly. You know, we just got the shout out. So I put Brother Ooh. Oatly in there. Even I like though that. I thought that one's probably going to be wrong. I don't remember who does one in OC. So one of them's got to be an OC player. But yeah, Brother Oatly, shout out to him. Okay, okay. And then last but not least, Kinch, what was your top five? That's five oh. fraggers in the world. I don't even know. I don't even know who that person is in for it. <laughs> who is that? OC player. Uh, Quixy. That guy's gonna be hacking. I've never heard of his name in my life. Charlie. Okay, so Kinch had Coyote in five, Quixy in four, Kazi in third, Yuma second, and Bolts in first. Interesting. Interesting. Oh, we're okay. fucking screwed, Reese. Okay. Well, Kinch's list looks very you different. Are, unfortunately. <laughs> Well, we'll get into the top 10, and then I'll get to the top 5. In number 10, Aspect over from OCE. Ninth, we had Skits, also an OCE player. Lily, in 8th, an Asian player. Quixie was actually in 7th, oh. so a bit of a miss there from, from, from Kinch. Overestimated Quixie's ability. Uh, in number <laughs> you, you 6... You on some of the lists. Yeah, I mean, yeah, <laughs> he, he was on some of them, but not this one. Rora. From Asia was in sixth. Not I haven't heard Rura's name in a while, so props to Rura. Yeah, for OG. Being high up there. That's a proper OG right there. But this <laughs> week's top five, the answers were in number five. The man who has the hottest hand in all of Fortnite right now. It feels like Coyota was mm -hmm. in oh, Pakistan. <laughs> Pakistan. <laughs> 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 Definitely <they're> not Pakistan. <laughs> 
that was a plot twist. I didn't expect. <laughs> I was ready for that. Holy oh, shit! Yeah. I don't know where whoa. that one came from. <laughs> These are cool. I don't know what. What answer that? Okay, well, we we don't have the results on screen, but I will read them out. In number five was Kyoto. What curveball, man! In, in number four <laughs> was another Asian player, Yuma. In number four, mm. with 167 mm. eliminations, tied with Kyoto actually. So they were tied with 167. Mm. In number three. OC player, infamous OC player, resigns. He had 169 mm. eliminations mm. across the three finals. I think he played less finals than everybody else because Kinch in particular put three finals. Uh, <clears throat> so that's super wow. impressive. Number two, another OC player, Kazi. Aspect and Kazi. Crazy. Zero for four right now. Crazy. <laughs> and then number one, the best player in the world that feels like on form right now, Bolts. Nice and simple. So Whoa. it means oh, that yeah. uh, this week, Kinch wins, but that's kind of obvious because it was his list. Uh, and Boop number yeah. two and Resub in Wait, dead last. I, I literally mentioned mm. Peter Bot not getting any damage and I put yeah. him on my list like a I, dummy. I, I uh, don't know. You weren't thinking you panicked. Peter Peterbot, man. Oh. Yeah. Do you really actually get go? An, an extra point for doing it in 13 seconds, whereas Boop did it in 55 Yeah, and Kinch did, did in 68? I feel like a bonus Most point. Most desperately yeah. trying to remember my yeah. I, 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 <laughs> Which honestly, is definitely not something to be proud of. Honestly, <laughs> I think in future we're going to like have like a time limit. So like if you do over a certain time, you just lose a point in future. Mm. But it's fine. Even if you, even if we deducted points, Kinch, you still would have won by a landslide. So. I'm, I'm happy to disqualify myself, to be honest. <laughs> That, that I'll take the win. We'll, we'll be happy for that as well. I'll yeah. take it. I'll take yeah, it. We'll take it. Uh, well, thank you, boys, for joining me on the show this week. Uh, it's been a fun time. I'm excited to jump into some remix myself now, actually, as we, we hop off here. So hopefully one of you guys will play with me. Please, guys, please play with me. I'll play uh, with you. Don't worry. I'll play thank one you. game. We got thank Evil Cop, the most important tournament in an hour. True, true. we got to speed things mm -hmm. on there. Thank you very much as well, Kinch, for joining us as always. Friend of the show. People yeah. always ask Thanks me. Thanks for having me Kinch. on. Yeah, they, they always ask me to get you back on it. So, you know, I thought, why not? Instead of running uh, the free man today, you get Kinch back. Uh, you got oh, anything Jerry. planned? <laughs> Didn't say that. Um, you got anything interesting planned, Kinch, you want to let the people know about? Oh, you know what I do every day. Just look at, look at the data and post <laughs> it in Kinch Premium. That's, that's my life. And on the tweets. And grief everybody's trios with bad <laughs> stats. And, yeah. He's doing it on purpose, guys. I'm telling yeah. you. I'm that was a, that was a cow gamer aura type of thing. You know what to do. <laughs> you, know what to do. <laughs> you know what this is. Stats. Fucking kinch premium, bro. I'm kinch mate. Um, <laughs> Boop and Reese. I don't care what you guys do. Uh, yeah, we'll see you, you guys know next what I'm week. Fucking, we know what we're doing anyway. Ciao. Love ya. <laughs>